everybody, it is Claxon here, and if you guys enjoyed this video, you should subscribe for more Shadows House videos. Today we are going to be doing my reaction and discussion to episode 6, which means we're halfway through, I believe, and so that's kind of crazy, right? Because, like, I think that the climax of whatever's happening, like, is definitely, like, gonna happen, you know what I mean? Like, I think that, like, we're going into this labyrinth, like, they are going to drop a shoe, or the shoe is gonna drop, or however you say it, and so anyway, I hope that you guys will enjoy my reaction and discussion if you want to see my full-length reaction as always they are up on patreon and now you'll actually get like all the other ones too and so if you pledge just for this month right you'll get episodes like one full reaction two full reaction three full reaction and so it's actually kind of cool that you can uh, also binge through them if you like but they are timer and subtitle reaction so a you press play when I press play and that is up on patreon but this is gonna be my reaction highlights and then afterwards we are gonna have a discussion so I hope that you guys enjoy and why don't we just get into it let's go yeah, he just said, mm, I don't know though. What if the test is to, you know, break out of there and go with your shadow? Mm, I don't like this music. Excuse me. Why is this so creepy? Is somebody watching? Like using their bird or something? Oh, yeah. We'll see more evidence that Emily Co is like poor or she was like in a past life, you know? Oh, she's so positive though. Like Ricky is
other shoe is dropping, sis. Oh! <laughs> I guess John doesn't need saving. I guess John is saving himself. But he said not to get his stuff dirty. That that was like one of the things. What? Sir, are you okay? Uh, oh, the cage from the other episode. Oh, were they making it just for Kate? Like, did they know that Kate was strong? Because she wasn't put in a box like anybody else. They already know. They must know. What? Sir? Already? Oh my god. I love, I love him. The king? Okay. <laughs> Damn. y'all sis oh well yeah speaking of everybody oh see so all of them know it oh that was so interesting to see the nobles i need mean, this is one of those episodes where like a first watch is not enough like you need to rewatch this episode before you can catch everything. Holy fuck. Oh my god. So that wasn't exactly like the shoe dropping that I thought was gonna happen. Like this episode was pretty chill, all things considered, but I feel like that's because it's set up. Like we basically have completed like the first arc in a sense, right? Like in a in a way, right? Now we're setting up for this like garden, like labyrinth debut arc, right? And so that's kind of how I see it. I don't know. All right, everybody, let us get into the discussion now. Now, this wasn't exactly the shoe dropping that I thought was gonna happen, but I still think that we are basically ramping up to, like, creepy, dramatic stuff, and we're definitely gonna get there within the next couple episodes, especially with how this episode was shot. Like, if you guys notice, there's a lot of shots where it seems like somebody's watching them, somebody's looking in, and I actually have some theories about that, and so I think that things are definitely going to get intense as we go into the second half, but this was more set up to get there. So why don't we start at the beginning, a good place to start, like I always like to say. And so they're discussing what it means that Edward uh, kept them out, like the eat your sweets, stay in here type situation. And so they're saying he means we must stay here. The door has been locked. I don't understand the criteria. He's definitely watching how we fulfill our role as the shadow's face. But why was Ricky demoted one rank? And so they have like kind of went away from the door in this moment, right? They're sort of like, okay, well, the door is locked. We're supposed to be acting as the shadow's face so why would we not go with the shadows like I don't get it I think that that's sort of what uh Sean is basically trying to say but then he's moving on to Ricky like why did Ricky get punished that's what he's trying to figure out right now and so uh what was the reason behind your uh demotion and so he's just like okay we don't need to talk about this like we don't need to talk about that uh and so Lou's like well we weren't told to dance like she's trying to offer up a reason maybe that's why because I thought maybe it was because of that whole but Ricky like leads Patrick at time sort of thing. I also thought that he was just kind of doing it to fuck with them. You know what I mean? To kind of like uh, throw him off, so to speak, like to throw off Ricky uh, so they would fail because he seems like he's not trying to fail specifically Kate, but he's trying to fail somebody, right? Because if he doesn't fail anyone, and Edward talks about this later, oh, if I don't fail anyone, I'm gonna seem like I'm incompetent. I'm gonna seem like, you know, I'm not doing my job as a judge if nobody fails. But Lou is too good to fail, I guess, right? Ricky has a personality problems, and so I think that that's why he, like, demoted him. Uh, Sean and John are doing fine, so really, I think to him, it's, uh, Kate and Emily Co., and then Patrick and Ricky that seem the easiest targets for, like, failing, basically. And you would think, well, why not Rum and Shirley, but they haven't, like, done anything, and sometimes not doing nothing is a choice, you know what I mean? Like, they just sat quietly, they ate together, like, there was nothing that said that they were doing a bad job job at being like face and shadow right like in that moment when they were eating in this room like they didn't actually do anything to deserve any like 
um, criticism, I guess, or to get points taken off. And then when they dance, they danced perfectly fine, right? So I think in his mind, he's like, okay, well, somebody has to fail here, which probably does not bode well for Patrick and Ricky, by the way. Like, I'm sure, like, I, because I, Emily Co. and Kate, like, to some extent, you would think that they have, like, main character armor in a sense like they're not gonna fail and die obviously like unless failure means like going on a new adventure and this anime is about like that for some reason like I think that they're pretty much safe so that probably does not bode well for Patrick and Ricky right so it's my fault for taking the initiative well yes this because you're not supposed to take initiative that's the whole point sweetie right you all danced so you're just as guilty um it's probably hinges on how Edward feels at that moment exactly and so really I don't think that that, you know, Ricky really did anything wrong. I think that Edward was just like out for blood and he was like, yeah, well, this seems like a justifiable reason, bonk. And then you have the nobles at the end of this episode, they're talking about how much they like John, right? How much they like, I mean, I guess John and Sean, right? And so when you're kind of going down the list, they like Lou and then they like John and Sean and they do talk about Kate and Emily Co and how like oh he's targeting Kate poor girl but there's no like praise for Patrick like I feel like they don't give a shit about Patrick and so that's another angle for why Patrick could be the one to go is because the nobles aren't intrigued by Patrick they're intrigued by Kate I think is a good argument so this is interesting because uh you know Ricky is saying how unfair it is and then Lou is saying we are living dolls the shadows family may treat us however they see fit which is interesting that Lou says that because when you think about it this was in response to them talking about Edward how Edward feels but she's speaking as if like oh well that's the shadows family for you right and so could that be even more of a hint that Edward has combined with his shadow like does Lou I don't know like Lou seems pretty um what do you call it Lou seems pretty airheaded like you know sometimes but it's more like she doesn't like making decisions. That doesn't mean that she's stupid, right? And so when I'm thinking about it, it's like, did Lou realize something? That obviously he is acting on behalf of the Shadows family, but that could that be like foreshadowing? Maybe Lou doesn't know, but for us as audience members, is that foreshadowing? Because yes, like you would think Edward is acting on behalf of the Shadows family, but at the same time, doesn't that kind of point to the fact like, oh, like why are we, you know, indulging Edward on every single whim? Like, like it's just about how he feels at the moment and then in response to that she's saying well they're the shadows family they can do whatever they want like obviously he's the doll for the shadow but you know what I mean like it could be a little little bit of foreshadowing is all I'm saying aren't you threading over trivial matters well no his standing isn't a trivial matter I don't think right like I mean I think that that he's just trying to rile him up right but anyway Emily Co she looks behind her see and so there's just this lurking feeling that like somebody is watching and I'll point out the specific screenshots where uh, and so this is very interesting so she is holding her teacup with both hands and so this kind of goes with my theory that Emily Co is actually a peasant like we've been talking about the past couple weeks that you know like she was a human and she was like the child of like a farmer or something that's basically you know what I've been saying for the past couple weeks because she's holding her teacup you know like this you know she's not holding her cup like this right she's holding it like that and so that's a more like commoner or like less elegant way right and so that kind of fits in with our uh theory about that because Ricky seems to know now whether or not Patrick told him or not it's very interesting because I'm surprised at how much information the shadows actually know because like John has the concept of marriage and like marry me and I'm gonna be the king right and you would think like I don't know like how did they get all this information like were they born with it like I don't like anyway I was thinking about that and so did did Patrick teach that to Ricky or is that something that comes natural to both of them because Patrick is obviously like oh they say later that they're all nobles right so that makes sense sense that maybe in the books there's some etiquette books but did Patrick teach that to Ricky or did Ricky like already know that because he was a noble like in his like quote-unquote past life like pre-memory wipe we could say right but that's basically what I'm saying is that like John has this concept of like marriage and stuff like that and so I'm just like did the books tell y'all that or did y'all like were y'all just born with like knowledge of the world anyway what's taking so long are we supposed to go to and so before I guess the reason why they weren't so concerned about the door being closed is because they were sort of like oh well 
well, I guess we're not meant to go with them. It's fine, right? They were, well, we'll, we'll just ignore it, right? Like, they were like, nah, that's not important. But uh, now that they've waited for a significant amount of time, they're starting to get worried. And so it actually makes sense why they just sort of like, oh, the door's locked. That means we're not supposed to go. And then they went back to Ricky, right? They went back to focusing on Ricky. Um, but now that, like, it's taken a significant amount of time, they're like, like, are we supposed to go somewhere, right? And so, uh, what's taking so long? Are we supposed to go too? Don't be stupid, it's locked. And he didn't tell us to come along. Use your brain. So, like, Ricky's like, use your brain. Like, he's like, you know, he thinks he has all the answers. But he never said that we shouldn't come. And now, when you think about it, did Edward not give a hint? He said, eat your sweets. That was the hint. And so I do think that as much as they're trying to test them to, like, match, right? Like, oh, you know, do you embody the face? Like, I think that they are also trying to test their intelligence. Because I said this last week, what's more important? Not threading over trivial matters or like obedience or loyalty, right? And so that was a very interesting question. And so now I think that it's more one and the same than we thought, because you're not supposed to be obedient to Edward. You're supposed to be obedient and loyal to your shadow. And so even though leaving would be disobeying Edward in a sense, well, he never said that they shouldn't come. So it's not even disobeying. But do you guys understand what I mean? Like I was toying around with that idea last week is is it better for like oh if they just sat in here and didn't like think because again like Lou like she just doesn't think right she doesn't like making decisions right um but Emily Co even says like threading over our shadows is not like a trivial matter right and so I really like that it's not just testing like the matching it's also testing like their skill their intelligence right and I think that that is going to be important especially with the nobles talking at the end of this episode of like oh like his soot was so important impressive, like da 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 da, like they're also looking out for those qualities as well. And so where I was going into this thinking, oh, well, you know, they don't want them to be smart, they just want them to be kind of like perfect copies all the time. Like, I, in a sense, to be you know, a perfect copy, you also have to kind of be smart, right, in this instance. And so I think that that's really cool how they sort of, like, combined all, all these things together. And then, but that's what he meant, no. And so this is what I mean. Like, this is clearly, like, somebody's watching them. And so I, I know that we saw the map at the end of this episode, but we also see, like, birds going, like, boom, 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 boom. And so I wonder how it works. Like, I wonder if it's, like, a magic mirror or if it's sort of, like, I don't know, like a TV, like a bird's eye view. It could be actually fairy tale inspired because I don't know if you guys know this, but like in Norse mythology, right? Like there's the, the ravens. I only know this because of Ruby, really. I haven't like read up on this or anything. But you have like Odin's ravens, right? And they like go out and like, I don't know, they look at stuff, I guess. And so what I'm sort of thinking is that like maybe all we saw was the map, but then behind the nobles or something, because they were all like, they were looking like this. So say behind them, then there's just like, like, you know, a little magic mirror and like they can see everything that the birds see. I think that that would actually be really cool because, yeah, and it does seem like they're looking at the map, but how do they know what's going on? Like telepathically? I don't know. Like that would be cool, I guess, but it would be more understandable if they knew everything that was going on because they were like literally looking and hearing through the birds, but also the birds may actually be a part of them. And so it may be telepathically. And so either way, I think that they're definitely being watched and like listened to, whether it's telepathically or whether there's actually something going on. I think that it is supposed to be like an Odin's raven, uh, o yeah, Odin's raven and, and crow, I guess, if we're talking about Ruby, like sort of reference right there. So then Emily comes like, please don't fight. And then Ricky is just like, ah, oh, yeah, that's why they call you sunshine. So Ricky says, we're bitter rivals. And so it seems like that he's already decided that Sean is his rival for some reason. But I guess it's because, like, they're the only two boys. Like, I don't think that that matters, really. Like, I'm sure that, you know, like, there's three girls, obviously. Like, they're not going to only pick one boy and one girl. But we do see later on, like, in the case of Star Bears and stuff, there is at least, right, one boy and one girl on the floor, right? There's Barbie and then there's that, like, other dude. And so he could see, like, hey, you know, we can't both be Star Bears. Like, I'm sure there's more than just those two star bears but like that sort of concept maybe that's what but there's three girls and so really I don't know but it, it's just an anime trope type of thing right and why in the world do you hold your cup like that and so again right we're getting into the the cup slander but I'm say I'm just saying that I think that that is because uh, of the memory wiping whatever life Emily Co had before right this is what comes natural to her
her as opposed to like the pinkies out type thing. How sorry I feel for Kate, right? You hold cups by their handle. And so look at him, he's just like, shut the fuck up, bro. Like I'm gonna, mm, like he's just mad. Elegant, right? No one holds it in both hands. And so she actually takes this pretty well, right? And I really like this scene, how she's just like, thank you for telling me. And he's just like, I didn't want that reaction, you know? And then he's like, you know, he's trying to hurt her feelings. And so he was trying to hurt her feelings and then it didn't work because she took it as helpful advice. And so now he's like, Emily Co, you're an unloved doll with a strange name, right? Like now he's just like going for it. Like he's like, okay, if that didn't work, I really gotta hurt her feelings. And I'm just like, why? And so you see that she's kind of taken aback by that. She's just like, you know, that does make her a little sad. But, right, because Kate had sense knocked into her, if you want to call it that, because Kate, you know, stopped being, like, uh, unaccepting of Emily Co. last episode and actually started to accept her, like, this doesn't bother her very much because she says, Mistress Kate told me I was fine just how I am, and I have no right or reason to not believe her. And so I think that that's great, too, because it's like, hey, we only listen to our shadow masters right? And Kate says, I'm fine. And she's a higher status than you. Like, obviously she's not saying it like that because Emily Co. is a ray of sunshine, clearly. But that's how I'm sort of thinking of it. Like, that is kind of the underlying meaning. Not that Emily Co. is necessarily projecting, but that Ricky could take it as, as somebody who, like, appreciates, like, the status of things. You know what I mean? Like, he would be like, ah, oh, she pulled the Shadow Master card, right? Like, that's how they would think of it. And she's just so, like, cute. You know what I mean? And so we get a couple frames of of just her eating and like I guess constantly like you know eating more because it's it's a weird little animation but it's like freeze 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 like you know what I mean like the cookies on the plate just keep going down like over time I guess to represent time passing and Ricky being angry that like he cannot like break through her spirit and everything um and so then she spits out the puzzle piece and I thought that this was literally genius I really liked how we saw in the end credit song like the key coming together and I I, like, I didn't even think that, I didn't even say anything about that last week. You know what I mean? Like, we've seen the key in the intro. I mean, I guess I could have if I paid more attention, or I guess the outro. I guess I could have if I paid more attention, but uh, last week I didn't even think of that, right? Because we analyzed the OP in episode one, but um, I don't know. Like, again, I just didn't, it didn't occur to me that the key from the end credit song would be the key that they would use to get out of this door. Like, I thought they were gonna break a window or something, or find a secret way to escape. Like, not something that simple. And so I just really love how all the foreshadowing is in that end credit song and it's just so cool and so I'm like Ricky's like he's like I take that personally <laughs> and so Ricky is like yeah that's what you get for eating like he thinks that it's like Edward's curse if that makes sense like that she's gonna get in trouble or something like that and so then uh Sean says oh uh that's a um fibe? Maybe. I don't know. Like, that was more Italian than French. Um, I'm not entirely sure how you would say it with the accent, but I would th maybe it's, uh, uh fave. Fave? Fave. I'm so sorry. French, I took French from grade four to grade nine, and it did not help. I don't remember how the accent is supposed to sound. Anyway, and so Sean is saying that he read about them. When? Like, when? When did you have time to read? Like, you know what I mean? So is this, again, like Sean from the past life, or did John, like, let him read some of the books that they have access to? Because I'm like, when were you reading, sir? When did you read about them, right? And he doesn't think that that's weird, so I'm assuming that he must have read them within the house, or else if he's thinking, I read about them. Wait, when did I do that? That's a little weird. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't, he doesn't have that sort of reaction, so I'm sure it's fine. But he says, it's a small porcelain good luck charm. One is placed inside uh, a sweet pastry eaten on New Year's. And so, again, I'm not even gonna try. Uh, happiness comes to whoever finds it. And so I'm like, mm -hmm, okay, right? What does such useless knowledge have to do with the debut, right? And so that's what I'm thinking is, if he learned it in his past life, he's not alarmed by that. Like, he's not alarmed by how he knows this and how it's, you know, suddenly appearing in his brain even though he has no memories before Shadow's house. So I'm assuming that this actually must have been, like, in the debut books and that maybe John and Sean were studying together and it's not useless knowledge at all. Like, the, the knowledge was actually put in there, so if a Shadow had done their studying, like, with their doll, they would know, you know what I'm saying? And so I like both ideas. Um, 
but I would actually favor the idea that this was actually in like the debut books that were received and that Sean had read about it because John and Sean like they seem to be more of a partnership and so they probably would have you know put a lot of effort into reading the same stuff and studying together that way whereas maybe a more like one-sided doll relationship like the doll would be you know out there like doing all like the cleaning stuff and everything and then like the uh shadow would be the one that's like doing all the reading and maybe like not sharing that information like only sharing what they find valuable whereas if you you know both read together like you can both like retain that you know like I'm sort of imagining like a shadow is reading and they're like okay like we need to like like be similar we have to do similar movements for the debut right and then they see this thing about the porcelain charm and they're like well that's useless right but if you study together that way like one of you knows like the information so I kind of like the idea that John and Sean studied together and that's how um Sean is able to know like that's the idea that I personally like just because it would be telling of their relationship whereas Patrick if he was the one reading everything and just telling Ricky what he he thought was valuable like he may know about the porcelain or remember it right but like obviously Ricky would not so I think that that's like an interesting idea right there's writing on it Edward did say we should eat our sweets right and so like again she's not as stupid as as uh people may assume she's not dumb she just doesn't like to make choices I definitely feel like she just cripples under anxiety when she has to like make a decision right um maybe there are more in the other sweets and so what I'm wondering is why they actually ate them instead of just breaking them all apart because uh nice work Emily Co so that was nice I really like the the Sean and Emily Co like supportive relationship like thing that they have going on and so they're like come on let's eat but there's a lot of food and so I get it like this is probably like a luxury you know like all they get is like bread every day like maybe they get something else I don't know like maybe the bread is stuffed with something but this is like sweets like must be like you know like if you were in a desert and all you had was like I don't know water and potatoes and then you like go to a bakery for the first time like I don't know just something like that and so like I understand why they ate it all like I do get it because you know this is probably a once in a lifetime type opportunity to eat this kind of food but at the same time I'm like but y'all could have just broken all of them open to find the charms and we could have got it out of here faster right um if you think you know better but don't come crying to me if your rating goes down right so he's like just not doing it and look at how happy they are and so again there are like perks to eating all the food is that you know you get to you get to eat the food but like Ricky had said that he ate too much and I'm like sis y'all y'all could have just smacked them all open <laughs> you know what I mean you could have broken the cookies apart but still like look at how happy they are like this is a nice scene and even he he's like eating a little bit reluctantly and I like to see um all of the plates like undone uh from before and so if we just go back you see that it's actually on the um the left and the right but then in that one it's on the right and the left and so I really like how they switch that up and then we get the key the key that was in the end credit song and I'm just like chef's kiss like this was just so cool I really wish I mentioned it last week like I wish that I remembered I should re-watch the end credit every week before I do like my discussions because like it was so obvious that the key shaped thing like from the end credit could have been a like a key used for the door but anyway uh, and so but that's what are we supposed to do with that and so they don't know what to do with it right I knew this was just more of his abuse so he's like thinking that Edward is like taunting and bullying bullying them right like he's just hooked up on that like Ricky has taken an ego blow from getting like uh thrown down and so he says I ate too much I feel sick and so she's looking at the door and she's like putting it together and realizing what she can actually do with it and so I really like this because they're like they're looking at her and then Lou turns to look at her like I just really like the framing of that like how everyone's just looking as she's like going up towards this massive door I really like this like this just massive door and then the key like fits perfect mm -hmm this was just so cool I really really liked this uh, and then it opens and there's just light and this reminded me of promise Neverland for some reason like just going into the light that new horizon except like this isn't exactly being free like they're not free but I still liked it I like like the uh, framing of the scene and everything this means sh this means we should go after them right it might be a trap besides we don't even know if those really are uh, favets or whatever we were calling them all uh, right and so he's saying if it's good luck like that could be like bad luck you know and so Emily goes like come on let's go and like how can you say no to that face like, look at how happy she is going towards the light worry worrying about our masters isn't 
a trivial matter. And so I love that because, again, last episode I was like, well, will they get points if they stay? Will they get points if they if they leave? Right? But, like, breaking out is being loyal and is, you know, being a living doll. Like, always making sure that you're with your shadow, taking care of your shadow. And so I'm like, yeah, let's go. Right? And so I really like this, how they all smile. Except for Lou. She doesn't smile. I don't know. Maybe she feels, like, apprehensive about it. Right? Because she has the exact same expression. So I think that that's, like, a nice thing for her care. Like, that tells us a lot about her. Right? Like, she's just all the time. But I like how Rum is, like, just so happy. Rum has so many good moments this episode. And I'm a little worried about her, by the way. Like, I think that that is a death flag. Like, I think that it's a massive death flag if a character is getting a lot of attention and they're really cute and they were shy, but then we grew to love them. I think that that's uh, not good. And so, yeah, I just like how Ricky's like, huh, right? I just like that. And what's interesting is, is that I think that Patrick was first and then Kate was, I don't know if she was last actually, but we had, so I think that we had Patrick, Louise, um, maybe Rums, uh, Rums Shirley is what I was gonna say. Maybe Shirley was at the end. I don't remember exactly, but I think they were actually in order of how they were ranked. So I think that it was Shirley and then Kate was at the end. But either way, right, regardless of that, it's funny how Emily Co goes first, whereas before I think it was Patrick that was first, whereas Ricky is going last. And so it just really shows the difference between them. And I really, really like that, right? Because, again, I don't remember exactly what it was, but Emily Co is going first, whereas uh, Patrick was the one that went first, but now Ricky is not going first. Like, Ricky is going at the end. He's last, right? So I think that that was cool. So this is the shot of the birds, and I think that it is heavily implied that this is what's watching them. Like, the birds are watching them, and then somehow, again, either telepathically or otherwise, feeding the information um, to the nobles that are like watching the games basically. And so we get this hourglass type thing and then we have, um, I wonder what this means because this does look like it could be a symbol of some kind. Like, you know what I mean? Like it looks very like astrology based. Actually, I'm gonna go look. All right, guys. So this looks like the Aries sign and I'm not entirely sure what that would mean. Maybe it's like the month that the debut took place. Like maybe it's a hint that they all had like Aries um, deliverance, right? So maybe all of this is happening in March. Like I'm not entirely sure because like there's, okay. So there's zodiac signs, but then there are the things like with the planets. You know what I mean? Which is different. I know that that doesn't make any sense. But like there's zodiac signs in the sense of like Aries, Pisces and all that stuff. But then there's like, if you look up like the signs for the planets, because not all like planet signs are zodiac signs, right? And so like you have like Mercury, Venus, Earth, right? Like those ones are kind of different. So looking at it, it does seem like it fits more with the Aries symbol than like, you know, the symbol for the moon and stuff. So like, could it be a V? And it's just a V? Yes. But maybe it could be like the Aries sign because the Aries is just like a little like swoop. And so what does that mean? Who the fuck knows? I don't know. I don't know anything about why there would be like astrology going on like in terms of like the symbol on the statue other than this is the month that the debut is taking place. That would be my best guess. So astrology aside, we do have this scene with Edward monologuing to himself, but I do not think that he is talking to himself. I think that he's actually talking to the shadow that he has been combined with, right? Like I think that something very interesting that I heard, I'll have to check if this is true, but all of the shadows and their dolls have the same voice actresses or actors, I think. And so what would be interesting is if, oh, well, we all think, oh yeah, that's Edward talking. That's his voice. But actually, like, it's Edward in his shadow and we just don't notice necessarily as the audience, like that type of thing. Because I think that Emily Co and Kate are the only ones that have different voice actresses just to, like, you know, showcase Emily Co's, like, individuality, right? And so it would be interesting if we think that this is supposed to be, like, a one way, like, monologue, but it's actually two way and I do have like a point where I think that could be happening. It was supposed to be easy. <laughs> Scary, right? I think that he is not, he's just not good. He's just not good, guys. There's something with him and I think that it's the combination thing, right? Kate can be brought down. No, must be brought down. And so before we get to the part where I think that he is um, monologuing with his shadow, actually, I would like to say something about this because I heard that this is a bit of a mistranslation in the sense that in the manga, 
it wasn't clear. Like, they basically said the equivalent of they must be brought down, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, they can be brought down. No, they must be brought down. Like, they said they, not necessarily saying Kate, but then I guess, like, the, the people that were, like, doing the translation didn't catch, like, the nuance of that, and so they wrote down Kate. That's just what somebody told me. I'm not sure if that's true, but I think that the intention, like, the way that the person explained it to me is that in the manga, it's supposed to be a little bit ambiguous with, like, Kate being kind of, like, in the forefront of it all. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you think that he's targeting Kate, like, specifically, that he has it out for Kate specifically, whereas it's really a bit more ambiguous, and so I think that it's more like they, as in, like, we don't know who he's talking about. He's saying they must be brought down, right, or they can be brought down. No, they must be brought down. It's not because he hates Kate particularly, you know? I think that it's just, like, who's gonna be the easiest to fail? He's trying to find somebody that he can fail to seem like a competent judge, right? Because he says, but I got her living doll all fired up, and on top of that, when I played the piano to calm myself, Patrick and his doll started dancing. And so I think that basically what he's saying here to me is that um, he wanted to fail Kate and Emily Co because they seemed like that they were doing badly. But then her doll got all fired up, right? So he was like, I could have failed Kate. It was gonna be so easy for me to fail somebody because like, you know, they were doing bad. But then I got her doll all fired up and the next person that I thought would be easiest, Patrick and Ricky, they started dancing dancing and proving that they're in sync or whatever. And so now, who am I gonna fail? Like, that's basically what he's saying. And so this is interesting because I don't think that this is actually from, um, Edward's eye. Because, like, look at where he's sitting. Like, they're walking down the maze. I guess he could be at the end and just looking at them from far away, but do you guys think that this could be, like, bird vision as opposed to, like, because you would think that it's Edward, but it's kind of weird because, like, he's so far. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, he's all the way down this path, and so I was sort of thinking, like, what if that was one of the birds looking at them versus Edward? But anyway, um, now Kate and her doll are closer, making it harder to eliminate them. This debut is a test of my skill as a judge. I will seem less than motivated if no one fails. And so he's not like, I hate Kate, I need to get Kate out because she has special magical powers and we cannot challenge Lord Grandfather. Like, it's not for that reason, because I did have a theory, like, very early early on that like, oh, Kate has special powers, what if she wants to hide them because like she knows that she's not supposed to have them, but then we see like all of the other nobles like kind of have special powers too, like you have those soot birds, right? So it seems like that Kate is actually like pretty powerful and would rise up in the ranks fairly quickly like when you think about it, so it's not even that, you know? And so he like wants to fail her so badly, <laughs> right? And so now, now he can't, and so that's a problem, and I totally lost my train of thought. Why did we start talking about about Kate having powers? I don't know. It's so basically like he wants to make somebody fail, right? He wants to make anybody fail, but the problem is, is that, oh, no, 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 now I remember what I was saying. So the reason why I'm bringing that up, like that he doesn't hate Kate in particular, is because it's not about getting out Kate because she has magical powers that would take down Lord Grandfather, we can't have that. Because the other nobles have magical powers, right? Like they have like good soot control too, like they're making birds, you know what I'm saying? And so it's not like that Kate is being targeted because she has special powers and that would take down the system or whatever. Like, that would challenge Lord Grandfather's power. Like, we may have thought a couple episodes ago because she was saying, oh, we should hide this. We don't know what it means. Like, that's actually a good thing that she has those powers. He's not targeting Kate for that reason. Like, he's just targeting Kate because he thought at the beginning, this will be a cinch. All we have to do is get that one out. Like, clearly, that one's the worst one. But now he's like, oh, fuck. Well, they're all kind of good now, so what do I do? I don't know. <laughs> Again, see, but I can't simply fail a pair without a reason, and so he needs a reason. And I think that that's why he said, like, that no harm can come to their faces, because maybe he's planning to, like, harm one of their faces and get them discarded that way. Like, that could also be the thing. And then he also said, like, about their clothes getting dirty, and so I'm like, oh, John, I hope that you don't get eliminated. I hope you clean up, because, like, he may not, he may take points off of you just for that, 
even though John and Sean are pretty promising, right? And so I find that interesting. But see, I think that he was just trying to fail who he saw, like, the easiest to be failed. That was Kate and Emily Co. He's not targeting her explicitly. And then it was also Patrick and Ricky, but then they sort of, like, uh, regained their status, even though he threw Ricky down a peg, right, for annoying him, like, still. Um, I must get my plan back on track, right? And so he says, calm yourself, Edward. It isn't really that difficult. And so you would think upon first glance, okay, well, you know, I may say, like, calm down, Cal. It's gonna be okay. Like, I say those things to myself. That's normal, I think. I don't know. Like, that's normal, I think. Like, when you're going through something, you try to calm yourself down, right? Like, it's fine to refer to yourself in third person. However, could this also mean that this is the shadow talking to him, right? Because obviously, not only do the shadows all refer to themselves in third person, but if the shadow was referring to the face, right? Like, you wouldn't say, like, you know, uh, calm yourself like Kate if Kate was talking to Emily Co you would say calm yourself uh Emily Co right and so basically what I'm saying is is that like the shadows have a habit of doing third person talking uh and so it could be the case that if they're fused the shadow doesn't see himself as Edward the doll he sees himself as like Edward who is also the shadow right now like that's the interesting thing what if this doll is not called Edward, and Edward is the name of the shadow, right? And that he's just assuming the name of the shadow because the shadow has combined with him, and so now, like, he has gotten rid of his identity as a doll. And so what if it's like that, too? Like, what if that's why, like, they're talking in third person? So there's just layers to this theory, right? It doesn't really matter. My point is, I think that he's having a conversation with the shadow in his head. And so either that's the shadow saying Edward, as in Edward the doll, right? Like, calm yourself, Edward the doll, it's fine. Or, like, the shadow's name is actually Edward, and the shadow's actually just talking about themselves in third person, because the way they see it, they are occupying Edward right now. So, like, there's interesting nuances. I just don't think that he's inner monologuing. I don't think it's as simple as, like, Emily Coach, she were to refer to herself. Like, I think that it's more than that. I think that he's having a conversation with his shadow. So, Edward is saying you must exit the garden before the allotted time expires. A time limit was never a good idea, sis. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm just saying, and never a good sign. Maybe a good idea for him, but never a good sign. And so that's a little bit concerning, right? I feel like that somebody's not gonna make it out. <laughs> but first, you must save your masters. So it's not just about saving their masters. They also have to get out of the garden, and so it's like, y'all don't have a lot of time, sis, you know? And so I'm worried that one of them is not gonna make it out, and that'll be really sad, and I don't know what'll happen, but like, I don't know, like, everybody's leaving throughout the door, and it's like, come on, Patrick! come on Ricky you can do it right like I don't know something like that and then like they're right like almost there and then the garden just goes up in flame I don't know right but anyway um save them what have you done you must be concerned it's important to feel that way after all living dolls exist for the sake of their masters right and so what was interesting here is that like it seemed like that rum had a very interesting reaction to that and it's because like I've been saying the past couple episodes or it's interesting to me because I've been saying the last couple episodes that like she's been really down on herself that nobody needs her right and so it's very interesting now like it's almost like she's being reminded um that living dolls exist for the sake of their masters and she has an adverse reaction or a different reaction to that because she's like oh shit yeah like I haven't really been thinking about that lately because all she's been thinking about is I'm I'm useless, nobody needs me, oh, I could have been friends with Emily Co, but, like, you know, I'm not, right? And so it's very interesting because she didn't really consider her master at any of those other times, and so now that Edward's bringing it up, I feel like she's like, oh, that is true. <laughs> That's not good, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Um, why are you putting us through this? Such questions are trivial, immaterial, right? Consider carefully what you should be thinking about, right? And so, again, don't think about why, just think about going to save them and what you should, uh, and what you should not. You must protect your masters for they are nobles, right? And so again, very interesting about, like, the whole nobility thing, because I sort of get a feeling that if you were making, like, noble, 
uh, shadows, right? Like Kate, uh, like, uh, Patrick, like Louise. Like, I wonder if you would recruit, like, noble children. I guess I shouldn't say recruit. You would convince a noble family to give up their firstborn, like Rumple Skilled Skin, okay? Right? And so I wonder if Emily Co. is some sort of exception. Like, something may have happened to, like, the noble that was supposed to be, like, sent, right? Or, oh my god, this is actually kind of interesting. What if, like, they were looking for, like, kids, like, the noble-born kids to be the dolls, to be, uh, you know, the shadows dolls of the nobility, right? And what if, like, Emily Co., like, somehow got, like, snuck on by her parents, or they were like, oh yeah, she's totally a noble, like, you know what I mean? Like, they basically, like, sold her because, like, the noble family didn't want to give up, like, their actual kid, and so they sent Emily Co., this is such, like, a weird head, can't, like, there is no evidence for this, but, like, I'm just thinking, right? Like, oh, they're nobility, right? They are nobles, right? And so I'm sort of thinking, right, like all these other kids already know like how to hold a teacup and like what's proper and what's elegant and what's, you know what I mean? Like they already know their manners and we talked about this before, like, oh, okay, well what if Emily Co. is like, you know, this farm girl? We talked about that at the very beginning of this episode, but now I'm like, well, what if there's like a deeper meaning to all that? Like all of them were like the firstborns or whatever, or, like the lastborns, like it doesn't really matter. The middle children of noble families, like all these nobles have to pick like one of their kids to go. But then one of the noble families was like, well, we don't want to like send our daughter, but how would they ever know? You know what I mean? We don't want to sell one of our own children. So we'll buy this child off these poor farmers and send her instead. And then now like Emily Co's parents are like getting rich and living it up because they sold their daughter for money. Anyways, so yeah, <laughs> we don't need to talk about that. No harm must come to a living doll's face while in the labyrinth, right? So again, there's, um, uh, presidents put on, like, their face, because obviously they're the face, and similar similar similarly, there's, uh, emphasis put on a shadow's attire must not get dirty, because when you think about it, they're kind of, like, two halves of the same whole, you know, like, the face, right? The dolls have the face and the face is one half, so no harm must come to the face. But then the nobility, right? The part that makes, like, them stand out is actually their clothing. And if you put the clothes of a shadow onto a living doll, you get, like, a hole, right? And so it's a shadow's job not to get dirty because that's their part of being a face, is their clothes, in a sense, right? That Like, that's their part of presentation. That's the only part that they can present of themselves is the clothes, whereas the part that's most important for them to present is their face. I kind of like that. Are the ranking from top is Lou, Sean, Ricky, Rob, and last Emily Co. And so what's interesting is, is that like Ricky is actually pretty low now and he sort of seemed like he was trying to get out Ricky and Emily Co. And Emily Co. makes sense because like she was close to last, but now like does he just hate Ricky? <laughs> like I don't know because Rob is actually before Emily Co. But he hasn't said anything about trying to get out Rob. You know what I mean? Like specifically, like he talked about maybe it's because he thinks that Rum can get herself out. I think that's that. That's actually what makes the most sense to me. Just because, like, when you think about it, like before, um, it seemed so easy. But then Emily Co got all fired up, right? And so it's before, like, Emily Co was gonna sink herself. Rum could have sunk herself, so that was fine. But now, like, Ricky and Emily Co cannot sink themselves, so he must work harder to sink them. Whereas Rum is not mentioned because he still thinks, yeah, Rum could fail. But at the same time, like, why would he be so? worried about failing somebody then because rum is like close to the bottom why not try to make her fail too i don't know so let's talk about the items i have no idea what this is it looks like a canister of gasoline like i don't know like i have no idea or like it kind of looks like a crock pot but just the top like the rest of this doesn't make any sense so we have a wheelbarrow a mystery item because i literally have no idea it almost an oxygen tank? Like, I don't know. Okay, so it has handles. Great, it has a lid. So it kind of, I feel like it's a canister of gas, of air, and then we have some bread. Okay, I feel like he just did that for Emily Co. Right, to, to see if she'd be stupid. We have a lantern, water, um, a scale, and then we'll get a closer look. A mirror, a hairbrush, a comb, some keys. Um, who knows what this is? I actually saw, uh, a pepper thingy? Like, one of those things where you, like, do the pepper? Anyway, like, there's just a bunch of random stuff here, and I wonder if, like, what the doll was carrying in the other episode was actually, like, all of these items, because I think it 
was mostly candlesticks, but I think that the doll that, not the living doll, sorry, the veiled doll. The veiled doll in the other episode that was carrying the cart, I'm pretty sure that they had something that was looking like this. They had some candles too, but I don't know, right? Top rank doll chooses first. I love this, so I love how she <laughs> throws the rock, because they're like, why would you pick a rock? right? Like over everything else, but she's not picking the rock. She's just using it to help her choose it. So she picks the shears and like Ricky is just distressed. He's like, that's how you're choosing. I have trouble making up my mind. I just love this. I got to ship this. Is the ship sailing guys? Let me know. Like if people ship this, um, don't neglect important decisions, but it's not like you have the capacity for regret. And so I think like Sean just read her for filth, man. Like don't neglect to the important decisions that you have to make. Um, but like you won't care anyway and so then we get a closer look at the table who knows what this is can somebody tell me because this is so interesting to me like it kind of looks like it could be a watch but I have no idea then we have keys again the pepper thing I think that this maybe matches uh then we have the hairbrushes the soot suit the magnifying glass um we have the uh who knows what this is actually what is this a wheel a scale I don't know like this looks like like an incense burner sort of thing and then we have a bucket um, a, I don't know, a tarp, and then we have the weapon. And so this is, uh, Ricky talking, I think. I think he's like, it's not in my style to carry junk around. Then he's like, what is my style? And it's just like, again, you're thinking too much as an individual. Like, you have style. You're not supposed to have style. You're a doll, right? And so I think that that's actually pretty cool and interesting. It could be trouble if she threatens me with those shit. Like, why do you think that everybody's out to kill you, sir? Should I choose that weapon, right? Like, why do you think she's gonna threaten you? That'd be kind of, uh, that would not be funny, but it would be kind of funny if, like, the dolls, like, sabotaged each other because she did say, like, hey, you know, if I mark up my face or something, right? Like, he basically said, like, Edward said, if you mark up your face, you're in trouble. And so, like, what if, like, Lou does fuck with him? Because she, she does say, I'll give you a buzz cut. But what if she, like, scars this man? I don't know. Anyway, um, I need something really versatile. And so I really thought that Emily Co. was gonna pick the water because her big regret last time was not getting the water when they may have needed it. I don't know how the wheelbarrow is gonna help them get out Kate because it seems like to me, Kate is in this big cage and there are keys on the table. So I wonder if Emily Co. was supposed to take the keys. Um, and so I like John's thought process though. Water, does that mean we'll have to deal with Scorch's bread? This won't be over today. We're in for the long haul, but like there's the hourglass, right? I don't think that they knew that though right now, um, but there is the hourglass. And so I feel like that they only have like two hours, like, I don't know, but it doesn't seem like they have like, I don't think that this is gonna go for multiple days, like maybe a day, a couple hours, but anyway, hurry up and choose. You two are ranked the same. You can decide who picks first. All right, I'll go first. And so I like this, like they just have like such conflict out of fucking nowhere. You got some nerve, right? So just look at them. Ah, uh, you better stop messing with me. Bro, like, you didn't do anything to you, ever. You already punched me once. Shall we pick up where we left off? This was pretty, this was pretty based. I really like this one. And look at Edward. Edward's like, conflict. Uh, uh, uh. And this was like a really weird, like, zoom in on him. And But I like this. Emily Co. is just like, guys, you know, just, like, both say what you want at the same time, sis. And they're like, there's but one choice. And so they both get, like, totally different stuff. So I guess they were both worried because they were looking at the same cabinet, but they didn't know what the other wanted, right? And so they're like, oh, <laughs> I guess you didn't pick what we wanted after all. And so they just took what they had wanted. Isn't that wonderful? You ch I just love her. Look at how happy she's just like, great. You both got what you wanted. Woohoo. Uh, and so yeah, what the hell is this? The more I see it, the more I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? The more shots they show of it, the more confused I am. But yeah, I wonder if those keys may have helped to get Kate out of the cage. Anyway, um, I think it's interesting that Rum picks the light because I think that that probably has something to do with the episode where they were all in the dark because she's scared of the dark, right? Like that was the whole thing. Is that like, Rummy, like help, I'm scared of the dark. Like she was doing like that whole thing. And so I think that that's like what she would, and I love this, a lantern during the day, that's stupid. But then later when he wants to go in the darkness, guess what? You don't have a light. I loved that. That was so funny because she seems like so like doubtful about her choice. But then, uh, Ricky, you talk tough, but you chose something to protect yourself. Didn't you hear the rules? No harm must come to a living doll's face. Like, who are you gonna fight, sir? You know? And so I feel like that if Ricky gets desperate, he can 
could like maim somebody. Like, okay, so what if, right? Okay, so what if Ricky and like Rum, like Emily Co has gotten out Kate, like everything's fine. Like, you know what I mean? Like they are like safe in a capacity and Edward's like shit, like somebody has to fail. Like Edward's getting worried, you know, like maybe he's like, like tick tock, there's only one slot left. One of you won't make it out. Like what if Patrick like, hurts rum in order to, like, scar up her face so she'll fail. I feel like that that would be, like, really dark. I can see it, though. And then, like, everyone hates Patrick, and it's, like, awful and horrible. Like, I could see, like, him trying to bludgeon somebody because he thinks that, like, he is about to fail, and if he doesn't get out somebody else, he will get out. And it's, like, a big thing. I could see that happening. That he uses the weapon on someone in order to maim them or kill them so he'll get their spot. I really like this scene because it's kind of like a mini red herring. Like, you think, like, oh, she's talking about the bread. She's not gonna really pick the bread, is she, right? Because he's like, oh, there's junk uh, only left, you know? There's nothing there of value, right? And so she's like, that bread isn't junk, right? And so you're like, oh, no, not the bread, <laughs> right? But she's just saying, like, like, hey, the bread's not junk. Like, bread, food is important, right? And so I think that this may actually stem from, again, if Emily Co. was, like, like poor in the sense where there was, like, food insecurity or something. And so, like, maybe the reason why she cares so much about food is because food was kind of a luxury. So even something just like bread is, you know, something very, like, valuable in a sense. Like, something that's not junk. It should be, like, respected. I could see that. So she's like, no, not this time. And so she bows to the bread. She's like, sorry for for not eating you and I think that that's just so cool because I think it says a lot about her character but also a lot about her past. So she says I had to have this. I still don't understand why. Like I still don't know why she had to have it right out of everything that's left especially with the water still there. Like this choice baffles me because she said like oh I should have brought water like you know like that was a big mistake and so I really thought that her learning from her mistakes would have been taking the water but instead she takes the wheelbarrow and I still don't know why like I still don't get it. like it seems like she's putting stuff in it like she's like oh well grab some oranges right like I'll get some flowers for kids like and so I wonder if she was like I want the wheelbarrow so I can hold more things while we explore the maze like I wonder if she thought that far ahead just because like she has curious nature uh inherently right and so I wonder if that was her thought process but I'm like sis why did you do this I still don't understand like how is that gonna help you I don't know Yes, okay, so the soot class takes about two hours for the soot to go from bottom to top. So they only have two hours to find their masters and leave the maze, right? And it seems like that they've already spent like 30 minutes, like in my opinion, like going up that hill and everything. I think that that probably would have taken a long time. Like I feel like that we're already only at an hour and 30 minutes left. Like people could start to get desperate and start hitting each other. That's what I'm saying, okay? Okay, so I just realized I was talking about Ricky maiming someone, but he chose the soot suit. So the item that was protecting him wasn't, he didn't pick the hammer. And so I guess that that kind of goes out the window, but he could take loose scissors and still hurt somebody, okay? And so, yeah, the thing to protect him was to protect him from, like, I guess, like, scorches and stuff. Like, that's why he chose the suit suit. Because, like, that whole, like, oh, you chose something to protect yourself, that thing, like, threw me off for a second. Anyway, he could still hurt somebody, all right? Or maybe it'll be Lou. Like, Lou seems so innocent, but she's just like, oh, well, you know, gotta, gotta cut a bitch. You know, like, maybe she'll be the one to do it. She did threaten him. So, yeah, sorry. I just, I just realized that. I was like, Cal, you dumb bitch. What are you talking about? But anyway... It can still happen. Don't, don't come for me. <laughs> I have nothing to say about this except for the fact that Edward again looks super creepy. And so what I'm confused about though is that, oh, the soot's rising. So it's not like a normal hourglass where the sand falls. It's rising up. That's so cool. Oh my God, I love that. I love that for us. Oh man, I love that so much. I think that Sean is probably gonna find Emily Cohen Rum just because John is also in that area because I was like, oh, well, these two matched up, these two matched up, but Sean's all alone. I think that he'll find them just because, again, like, John is in that same area and everything, so I answered my own question. <laughs> and so, yeah, then they go. And so, like, these bird's eye views, again, point to the fact that they're being watched. Like, there's so many scenes like this in the maze of them just, like, so so clearly being looked at, right? I don't know what the rope is for. So they have a pencil, rope, scissors, a handkerchief, and a map. And so what I'm assuming is maybe that's to get up towards the exit. They have to climb the rope or something, right? Um, and then he's just looking and he sees the hut. So he sees a small hut 
and then he sees the dot. And there's actually another hut over here, so I wonder if there's multiple, because I thought that he was going down, not looking to the left, right? That's a different line. So it seems like there are actually multiple huts on the map, and what that means, who the fuck knows, right? Oh, there are five of them. Is that where our Shadow Masters are? And so too bad that somebody didn't find John earlier, because, like, he figured this out right away, whereas Ricky is like, I'm the only one that knew, right? But then Emily Co and Rum figure it out later, so it's fine, right? Um, and so yeah, then we see the dot, and then there's writing, and so I'm pretty sure that maybe it's either a hint, or that, like, their name and he can't see because he's blind, right? What I'm assuming is, is that maybe it's not, like, the name of the shadow, but it has something to do, like, with the pieces that they made for the key earlier, because I think that there may have been similar writing on those. I'm not sure entirely. Or maybe it's, like, there's three... And so that's who was placed. And so if you remember the order, it was Lou, uh, Sean, right? Or I guess I should say it was Louise, John, uh, Patrick, Rum, and, or I guess Shirley, I should say, and Kate, right? So I wonder if three isn't a, like, you know, there's writing under it, but it's not like their name and he just can't read it. I wonder if it's actually, like, the third rank. Like, who is the third rank? The third rank is, uh, Patrick, right? And so I think that maybe that's where Patrick is, right? Like, that's how they'll find out. They'll find out through that way. The magnifying glass was a smart move. Maybe I can pinpoint my master's location. So I wish we could see the rest of the dots just to, like, confirm. But that would actually make sense. Right, because he can't read it, but what if those are just, like, because those, like, they use squiggles for writing, so we can't understand the writing as the audience, but at the same time, those are just three lines. Maybe it's Morse code. Mm, you guys know what I'm about to do? I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, I don't know shit about Morse code, but it does say that a dot plus three lines is J, and J is for John, so I wonder if it's not necessarily three, like as in whoever ranked third, but like the line is actually like the letter, right? So the spot, right, is supposed to be like, you know, the shadow, and then the line is supposed to be like the Morse code, right? Because there's dots and lines in Morse code, but this actually spells out J, like if you put the dot over here, that's actually so cool. So Kate will be like line, uh, dot line, uh, if that follows, and then Lou, well, here's the problem, is that if you were gonna do Louise, there's actually multiple dots, right, and only, um, and only one line, and so I don't know how they would show that, but maybe that's, like, they would keep something like that hidden. Like, same for, like, Patrick has two dots, like, the only one that has, like, one dot, one dot is, like, K in Morse code, uh, John, John and Morris code, one dot, one dot. You know what I mean? Like, only a single dot as you're spelling out the letter. Like, it's just John, Kate, and then, uh, Shirley has all dots. So I don't know how you'd do that. Maybe it's not Morris code. Maybe it is the ranking. Anyways! So again, that sort of idea that they're being watched, it gets further and further away, and then it pans to Emily Co. It's like somebody's hiding behind this corner and watching them. It is very creepy, obviously. And so uh, she runs into Rum, right? And so I do like this scene with them together. I think it's just really cute. Um, and so she's like, oh, what a coincidence. Just kidding. I knew that I was close by, so I tried to find you. And so I thought that that was cute because she's just like, oh, me too. And so I'm just like, the bonding. But the bonding is why she's gonna die, right? Like, no character is bonded like this unless they're going to die, right? I'm heading for this hut mark uh, nearby. Let's go together, right? And so you see these kind of like little hearts in the triangles. I wonder if that's also a zodiac sign, but it could just be a hedge. <laughs> I guess we won't know today. You guys tell me, right? I'll be right back. So what's interesting is, is that she goes to check something on the map and there is a waterway. And so what's interesting is like, I know that this is just the wind, but this reminds me of like those anime scenes where like a character's not that they're evil, but like something like that, you know what I mean? Where they found like heartbreaking information, or like serious, like super serious, and then she's like, uh, let's put it down on the map, like I should be more careful, I could have fallen in. Like I wonder if there's more to this because we don't see her face upon realizing it. Because I, my first thought is like, okay, I wonder, A, is this the exit, and is this what the rope is for, to like climb down into the waterway and escape that way, or B, if there are waterways like in, <laughs> did I say one and then B? Anyway, it doesn't really matter. So like one, th could this be the exit? Yes, like it could be that simple. But the thing that I'm wondering is that knowing like that, you know, Shadow's house, like they, they never let you leave out the front door. Like what if this could be an escape later on is that like Emily Co. remembers the waterway and the waterway like being a part of like the maze and stuff. 
and then like that could be like a thing is that they escape one day like through the tunnels under the castle and it could be a thing but then in the end song isn't there this thing with like Kate being like covered in water and like the shadows are pulling on her and so I don't know which one it is like I don't know if this is the exit or if this is like um just gonna be something in the future but I could see like oh a secret passageway we can finally make it out of the castle or this is supposed to be like how you get out of this challenge like those are two different things but I find that fascinating of an idea the fact that there's waterways and like you know you can't escape out the front door but what if you try escaping through a waterway like mm, I don't know so it's unclear to me whether or not this is one of the huts that they were talking about or if this is just like a random area and I really like this I really could have used the lantern and then uh Lou basically comes up on him so you can tell that somebody's watching him I don't think that it's Lou that's watching him I think this is supposed to represent again the birds like he kind of like he's turned his back but then he's like oh what was that and like you know you're supposed to get this feeling of like dread that you're being watched and then he looks up right and then he's like ah oh, no it must be nothing you know there's nothing around right and then he turns he puts the soot mask on because he feels like he's being watched and then like Lou just comes in and goes whack right and so I don't think that she was the one watching him I I think it's supposed to be the nobles but I just love the scene and how she like scares him and I love how this seems like like the jaws of a monster or like an alligator or something like out of no right oh my gosh and so yeah and so like she's just like pointing them at him and she's like hush right and it was just like oh wait that wasn't a big hole that hole's so small he was gonna crawl through there okay I don't like that right it seems like this is more of a crawl space I thought that it was like a big like you know building okay so that's definitely not a hut that's just who knows what the fuck that is anyway uh you got a shortcut through the edge is that even allowed I love that so much and so then he decides you know better off to manipulate her I guess that's what he starts to say uh Lou where are you headed nowhere special your utter lack of thought is impressive so she's just going around but she doesn't like that I think that she's kind of mad I think I know where the shadow masters are no you don't yes I do there's a hint right on the map what map look in the bag we received like she didn't even look in the bag sis I love that uh the map has dots that seem worthless I'm the only one that noticed I'll take you there if you hack us a shortcut so I love this I love the pairing I love the idea I love how somebody's still watching them right um okay tell me where to start and so she's just like he's just like ah oh, yeah I got her and then she's just like however I'll give you a buzz cut if you're lying right so I think that that's foreshadowing to somebody killing somebody with this pair of scissors okay that's just what I'm thinking and so he's just like ah it's a deal and so he's so confident in the fact that he's not misleading her that he's like agreeing you know I really like this scene just to see like rum look at her then like look back and so she's like I thought like as if she's answering her own question that she didn't even ask it you know what I mean like rum keeps looking at her and Emily Co's like oh like maybe she's looking at me because she's thinking about like how I'm pushing by myself I'll just tell her I'm fine right and so she's like see I can even push with one hand and of course she trips on a rock and goes down the hill <laughs> and I really like this scene because this is such a big character moment for rum like Emily Co's like no I don't need help it's okay everything's fine but then she's just like I want to help and I'm just like ah like that's so great like I love that it's so cute and I just love I just love this character moment for her we could push it up if we work together and like look at how blown away Emily Co is by that by her belief and friendship and how friendship is magic and it's great and but they're still being watched so don't forget that and I love this because they realize how they can do more by working together and like Emily goes happy because she sees the result that rum has and like it's just a big moment for her and that's why rum's gonna die and I'm gonna be very sad when she's gonna die but I'm like convinced at this point like they've only really given um attachment to characters like in this order I would say like in terms of like likability out of the debuts okay like you have like John and Sean like they got some nice characterization you have uh rum and not really Shirley at all but you have rum right then you have Kate and Emily Co they're the main characters and then Patrick's got in development but it doesn't make you like him and then like Lou and Louise like Louise is cool but like you know what I mean she just doesn't invoke those like emotions right like they've given her personality but there's so much more of an attachment as an audience member to like rum and Sean because we've been with them for the past couple episodes right and so flags bad flags death flags is basically why I'm saying right because like with Patrick they're making him 
almost to be hated. Like, they're making Ricky to be hated and to be kind of an asshole. Like, if he died, we may go, like, woo, but it wouldn't be like, oh, he died, I'm so sad, right? Whereas if you want to invoke sadness, killing off Rum and uh, then having, like, uh, Sean and Emily Co. deal with the aftermath, that to me kind of makes the most sense. So then we get this, and this is just weird. So this is the explosion screenshot, and I'm not entirely sure why it looks like this, but there's another weird one later, and so I feel like that this is representative of the soot somehow, and we'll talk about it, because there's another weird screenshot like that when Kate's talking, and I'm not entirely sure what I captured exactly or what it means. So this explosion is John breaking out of the, the box, I guess, the crate, right? Uh, did someone trigger a trap? And so he's already thinking that, like, it's been a doll, but it was actually, right? It was actually the shadow. Soot really packs a punch. And so, first of all, you got dirty, sir. So, like, like, you know, you weren't supposed to do that. I don't know if he was told, right? I don't know if they told him that, but the whole thing was like, hey, you can't get dirty. And now I'm just like, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. John, you better clean up. I mean, he has time to clean up. Sean's like nowhere near him anyway, right? The air is so refreshing. A stroll might be nice. And so I just love how casual he is about it. Like, he just blows up a crit. He's such a himbo. That's perfectly what he is. He is a himbo 100%. So I guess this is one of the huts they were talking about, and I just really like the design and the layout of this, like this little greenhouse. I hope that we'll be able to revisit this in the future. Like, obviously, it's kind of implied that, like, Edward had made the maze specifically for this event, but I'm sure these buildings were already here. Like, to make a maze, you just do the hedges. You don't need to, like, you know, construct a whole building. So I'm sure that this was here before. I just love her concerned face. Like, Rub is just so precious. We can see all sorts of things from up here, right? And so you can see the layout of the maze, and then you see the smoke, and so this is where John exploded. So if they go into that direction, they'll find Kate eventually, but I wonder, like, what's going on with Shirley, because it seems like, like, that would be the place that makes the most sense to go, but then you would have the thing of, like, oh, okay, well, if, uh, Sean goes towards that, right, to investigate, and if Emily Co. and Rum are obviously going towards that, like, John, uh, would be found by Sean, Emily Co. would be found, or I guess Kate would be found by Emily Co., but then you still have to help Shirley, and that's why I think that, like, you know, they could fail, uh, very easily, because, like, Rum is not necessarily focusing on Shirley the same way, like, you know what I mean? Like, they wouldn't make it to Shirley the same way that going to John it ensures going to, uh, Kate eventually. And I know that, like, they wouldn't know that, like, the characters themselves don't know that, but as an audience member, again, I'm a little bit like, <laughs> right? And so I'm a little worried about that. And so, see, even in here, somebody's watching them. I don't like that. And, like, this is another shot where it's like, somebody's watching you. And so I just love how the episode really invokes all of that, right? Um, I know that's where our Shadow Masters are. So again, we don't see the map, right? And so that's kind of, like, the thing is that we don't actually get to see if it's Morse code or not. But they see the dot is nearby, and so they think, like, oh, well, that dot just exploded. That's basically what they're thinking. The noise was near that dot. Why don't we go over there? And then they'll find John, and then through John, I'm sure they'll find Kate, and then, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, there's a little, like, you know, greenhouse type situation, and so I don't really know what this would mean per se, but it is giving me, like, Adam and Eve vibes, like, don't take from the tree situation, you know? And so I don't really know, but that's sort of what it reminds me of, and obviously, like, this is a much brighter and happier place compared to some of the other vegetation that's around. Like, everywhere else looks very dark and, like, you know, scary trees, but there's just this one magnificent, beautiful orange tree, and I feel like that could be something later. Yeah, so very stark contrast there, right? You have that beautiful tree, and then you have this, like, scary forest, and Kate's in this cage, and this is the cage from episode one that they were building. So they made this specifically for Kate or for someone. And so that would seem to imply to me that they know about Kate's special powers, right? Because like, why else make this? Like, just in case one of them has special power? Like, you could say just in case, but I think that they knew that Kate was special from the start. Edward said to wait here till someone comes, but, and so she's just like, maybe the soot power can help. And then she's like, eh, no, like maybe it's risky drawing attention to it. And then she's like, yeah, but it's so tempting, right? And so I really, really like that. Like that thought process going on, like, do I do it? Do I not do it, right? So I really like that. But then she hides it. She's like, ah, oh, shit, like somebody's coming. And so, hi, John, you're still messed up, bro. You better clean up. That's an interesting spot. And so she's like, John, right? Like, look at this. 
It's just like they made this forest of death specifically for her. How is the wheelbarrow gonna help, sis? Explain that to me. Like, maybe it'll be like, jump and then jump in the wheelbarrow cake. You'll be fine. Like, it could be something like that. Perfect. There's a question that cannot wait. John wants your hand in marriage. And I'm like, is this because of how she acted around the sweets? Like, do you think that's her true personality? She's just like, not a chance. Like, she just does not miss a beat. But again, they know about marriage. And I'm like, how? Like, who told you about marriage, guys? Like, was it in the book? Like, I don't know. Uh, don't be so hasty. Uh, John has taken a fancy to you, but like marriage, okay, so not necessarily like that marriage would imply children, but in these times, yeah, kinda, like, like marriage in these times would have implied children, and so I'm sort of thinking if that's also an indication that like if marriage is a thing between shadows, like, kids would also be a thing between shadows, and so, like, these are somebody's kids. Because we talked about how Kate has a photo of her room, and that photo may be, you know, like, of her dad or something, and so maybe it's, like, not that they're all Lord Grandfather's kids, but, like, the original shadows, like, were Lord Grandfather's kids, and then those shadows went on to make more shadows, and more shadows, and more shadows, you know what I mean? Like, something like that, and so it's not necessarily, like, everyone was made handcrafted by Lord Grandfather, but, like, like, shadows can have normal relationships and have a little shadow baby. I don't know. That's just something I was thinking. He shall be the king of Shadow's house. And I'm like, are you coming for Lord Grandfather's job? Is that something you can do, sir? Right? Because I was sort of thinking about that, too. I was thinking that Lord Grandfather is not, like, a person, like, this immortal being, but it's, like, a position. And, like, you can, like, rotate out of that position. And, like, you know, when Lord Grandfather dies, like, the next shadow takes the place as Lord Grandfather or Lord Grandmother. Right? So when he's saying that he wants to be the king, I'm like, oh, okay, so is Lord Grandfather something that's attainable? Is that why everybody wants to win his love so badly? Because you could be Lord Grandfather's successor. So I love how Kate just thinks that he's an idiot, right? Um, are you saying you'll help if we were to be married? Kate will not marry someone so calculating, right? So she's like just calling him out. I love that. And I love how Kate's like personality is really coming out here because like it did before, but like this is just peak Kate. Like, I love this. Like, not taking it. That sort of, like, sass. Like, Kate has a lot of, like, sass to it. Like, think about, like, no thank you when she tells, uh, Louise that she won't keep saying that she's beautiful. Like, I just love it. And so we really get to see Kate in action here because every other context that we have seen Kate has been around Emily Co. or somebody else. So now to see her around, like, just one-on-one -on -one with another shadow, I think is just really cool for her personality to just come out. Yes, that was the plan. Quite perceptive. You are the one for John. So he's basically saying we're we're both smart. Like, yes, like, let's do it, queen, right? I wish you'd go away already. John was put in a crate, but with a wham, bam, kaboom, he blew it to bits and escaped. Yeah, like, that's such, you're a himbo, sir, I'm sorry. Overcome this ordeal on your own will be equals, right? And so I find that interesting, because he's basically saying, I got out of my own crate, so if you get out of the cage, we'll truly be equals, right? And they can make, like, pretty powerful children, right? So I wonder if that's, like, the whole thing, is that they are children of power powerful nobles already and that's why they have powers because like they have powerful lineage like it can be a whole thing right um uh then we may revisit the subject so he's basically saying like hey if you get out by yourself we'll talk about it after and so he's like wait sean didn't help you escape no john did it without anyone's help how? So she's trying to see, like, if he'll talk about the the powers that he used to get out. Weren't you listening? I was like, wham, bam, kaboom. So he, it doesn't seem like he even knows what he was doing. Like, he does say that soot packs a punch, but he didn't know that he could do that before, I guess. Like, he just did it today, maybe, right? It doesn't appear he was consciously controlling soot, but in your case, and so this is the weird thing, right? Like, what was this? In your case, that cage is quite a sight to see. Like, what was this supposed to be? Actually, I don't think that this is an explosion. I think that that's not the explosion thing. I think that this is the birds. I think that the the bird that came when the explosion happened was a bird, like that this shape, because look at this, this is the beak. At first I thought it was some weird thing to represent the soot of the explosion, and now I'm looking at this, because I thought that this was supposed to be like some monstrous representation of Kate because it had the pigtails, so I thought that it was supposed to be something, but no, like now that I'm looking at it, it's the birds, it's the birds flying around witnessing the conversation. Oh my god, I'm so dumb, but 
also so smart because I, I got it eventually. Because he was saying like, bro, like I was just put in like, you know, a, a box. Like you're in a cage. Like why? And so maybe he already suspects too that like why would Kate be put into something like this unless she has special like powers, you know? It looks more challenging than John's credit. Like it could be to trip up Emily Co. But it could also be because they know about Kate's powers. How will Sean find you if you're not where you should be? So I love that. Oh, right. We were supposed to wait. Sean was supposed to come. Oh, so that's it. You're a smart one, Kate. So I thought that that was funny because he's just like, oh, true. Okay, so I'm going to go back. Goodbye for now. Call John really loud if you wish to be safe. Oh, I thought that was so funny. I just love this, right? I just love this. So he's like, he's uh, basically, he's asking about the cage and she's trying to redirect him because she doesn't want to reveal the soot thing yet. So she's like, redirecting the conversation and so he's like oh yeah Sean was supposed to come and so he says so that's it you're a smart one Kate and so I think the so that's it is in answering his question you're put into a cage why so challenging and so he's like oh I see because you're a smart like you're a smart one there's something special about you I think this is him recognizing it because he's like oh she's trying to throw me off my question right oh yeah Sean was supposed to come and then he's like oh yeah she's throwing me off she doesn't want to talk she's redirecting me so that's it that's why like why would she redirect me unless there's something special right so I think that that's like the whole thing like I think that that's what it's supposed to Mean. There were no repercussions for his uh, conspicuous use of soot. Good to know. And it's good to know that there are other shadows that can control soot, right? Because soot control, like, you're supposed to, I think. Like, the nobles do it, right? Like, the birds are doing the thing and the birds are soot. So, yeah, I don't think it's like, oh, we cannot say anything about this because it will threaten Lord Grandfather. Like, no, I think the goal is that shadows do learn how to control the soot. I like how she says this whole test is like one big spectacle. And then again, we can see see, right, uh, the bird's eye view. So even though it is on the map, right, and they seem to have, like, weird tracking stuff going on, I wonder if they do actually, like, feel or see what's going on telepathically throughout the bird. It's like if something's watching us, or someone, I should say. Look at this person. So this must be Lord Grandfather, right? Because, like, like they're just on this giant throne and we don't actually see them. They're, like, huge. Oh my god. What if Lord Grandfather eats the shadows that <laughs> so sad okay so why don't we look so it's very hard to tell what's on the map just because like obviously um uh we can't see the uh the things anymore to see if it's morris code or not but this was the center um shirley is over here um this is patrick and this is louise and so louise is actually in kate and john's direction so i wonder if this will somehow split up um, Lou and, uh, Patrick, because, or Ricky, I should say, because I'm sure that Ricky is going towards who he thinks is Patrick first, and will save him first, and then it'll be like, Lou will be like, oh, what about me? And he'll be like, figure it out yourself, loser, right? And maybe that's when the cut, like, the, uh, murder, or the, uh, the scarring happens is because Lou is like, well, you told me not to fuck with me, so you're gonna help me, or I'm gonna break you, right? Like, it could be something like that. But anyway, um, and so we see this, we see a couple of huts, and so I wonder if they're all like orchard thingies and then we see this and so I wonder if this is the exit because like I don't know like it's there's a marking that's kind of different than everything else because you were supposed to find the exit so it could be through the waterway still but I wonder if this is supposed to be uh the exit but yeah the map is just kind of hard to read um because we don't have a lot like there's not a lot of detail um other than where everyone's little prongs are if that makes sense and so yeah it's just kind of again kind of hard to tell we can't see and confirm the Morse code situation but this thing does kind of look like an exit so I'll, I'll allow it I guess right and so I just love the nobles and how they're like uh watching I guess and so it seems like they are looking at something right like this guy's head is turned this like that way and so I think that they are like watching kind of like a magic mirror or something like this guy has binoculars like it's a whole thing like they're actually watching as much as they are like looking on this map and receiving information I love her we have no choice but to stand I want all of this so much and so yeah anyway and so I just uh took a bunch of screenshots so we could see like the map it seems like John failed to throw Kate off kilter and so for me like I like immediately thought like oh my god is John a double agent was he told to do that by Edward and no I don't think it's that I think that they're basically saying 
like, John's presence did not, like, make Kate break out or anything. Like, Kate is remaining composed. I don't think it's, like, we, like, wanted John to say that to see if she would use her power and she didn't. It was just, like, a coincidence and, like, oh, well, John didn't throw her off, right? But his, uh, high suit volume was quite impressive. So they like this. Like, they think he's a good candidate, right? Um, epic failures are more entertaining than outstanding candidates, right? And so this guy's like, I don't care if you're winning. I want you to fail. So I love that. What vulgar taste you have. This is a test, right? So he, this guy's a little bit crazy. Like, this guy wants failure. Whereas, like, this guy's like, this is a test. Oh, please. This is one of the few diversions we have. So it seems like that these two are more focused on, like, the actual, like, um, testing. Like, they actually want, like, the test to go through, if that makes sense. Like, they are like, like, this is a test. That volume was impressive. Whereas these two are, like, more entertainment. And so it's funny how the more serious ones are on one side, the more, like, oh, this is entertainment for us. Hoo hoo. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, this is one of the few diversions we have. John in that labyrinth chopping doll are most entertaining, right? Um, and so, yeah, then we see the birds. And so I think it's very much implied that the birds are the ones that are feeding the information, right? Um, does he mean to be a gardener, right? I love this. Edward went through such a pains to create it, right? And so, you know, they're like, oh yeah, the labyrinth chopping is funny, but Edward worked so hard to do that. Does he mean to be a gardener, right? And so again, right, a hint that there's like gardening roles in, in the castle and everything. Like medic, there could be gardeners. So instead of going up to third floor noble, <laughs> are you gonna be a gardener? What? And so, yeah, anyway, I think that that's kind of what I, uh, what I was thinking. Uh, should you not say Ernest, right? And so I think that they're saying like that he, uh, what does that mean? Abstinate means stubbornly refusing to change one's opinion or course of action. So he's saying that he's stubborn. They're saying that he has a stubborn personality in terms of the judging, right? And so they say, should you not say earnest? So like that he's trying really hard, maybe? He is trying to please Lord Grandfather, no doubt, right? And so it seems like that they're all looking out the window and they can like see what's going on somehow. That's sort of the implication I'm getting because they're all looking outwards, right? And then Lord Grandfather is looking at them. And so we don't have actually get to see the person that's standing in the really big chair. Um, in any case, Edward's bias in regards to the test is unflattering. So that's really interesting because Edward is being tested as well. Like when you think about it, this whole thing was, I want to rise up and be a third floor noble. Who, who, right? And so I don't know why I've said that twice now. That's my rich people. Ha ha. Right? Like that's his whole thing, but they're actually testing him and they're saying that they don't like the bias that he has in the test. So I think Edward, his like determination to fail somebody is actually going to be a hindrance and he's not going to get what he wants. Notably, his treatment of poor last place Kate, right? And so I feel like that basically what they're saying is like, you know, Edward's stubborn, he's earnest, but we don't like, you know, how he's conducted the test. And this is our form of entertainment, right? So like, I think that Edward is actually going to be like in trouble later. Like, I think that he's actually kind of going to get like bit in the ass for doing all this. And he may be like, but I did everything. I did everything right. Like, he's going to be like very angry <laughs> after all this is done. But I don't think he's gonna get the third floor noble thing. Um, and so yeah, then we see the butterfly, even worse, her living doll has sunshine on the brain. And I love this because look at Rum just looking at her so endearingly, and there's little flowers, and she probably is gonna put the flowers in the card and bring some to Kate, and it's so nice. And yeah, and this is where the episode cuts off. And that's it. And so yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed our little discussion in terms of what will happen next week. I think I pretty much talked about all my theories of people dying or getting murdered or something, but yeah. I have no idea how that wagon is gonna help them get Kate out of the woods. Like, you could say that maybe after Patrick uh, and Ricky piss off Lou, that maybe Lou will go on her own to find Louise, and then maybe they'll run into them, and then with the choppy thing, they could cut down the trees and get Kate out, but I feel like it's literally gonna be like, Kate, just propel yourself and jump into the wagon. I feel like it's gonna be like that. I'm really excited to see what will happen. I think that, like, things are going to ramp up, right? We're at episode six. This was a very, like, setup heavy episode. Like, they put in a little creep factor to make you still scared, but it wasn't the shoe drop that I necessarily thought. So I think that we are going to get there. It's just a matter of when. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.